Hello, this is Rick Gerard, and uh, I'd like to help you clean up your act. Let's get started by animating with audio. When you are working with footage, it's always a good idea to uh, double click the file you're going to use and open it in the footage panel and then do a little trimming. Unfortunately, with audio, you can't see what's going on. There's no waveform visible. So what I like to do is just drag it to the timeline and press the L key twice to reveal the waveform. And then I'm going to expand this waveform by clicking and dragging right down here. And check out the levels. Let's just slide it down here. Okay, this looks pretty well optimized. Uh, we can hold down the control command key and kind of double check the levels. And see, yeah, it's about to minus three. That's in pretty good shape. But if we need to adjust that, you can hold down the shift key and press L to reveal audio levels. And then you can adjust the waveform until you just, you don't want it to clip. You don't want it to clip like that. And you can hold down the uh, command or control key and give you a little finer adjustment. And get that audio so that it is right up filling the entire uh, audio spectrum. Holding down the command and the control key lets you uh, look at the VU meter and kind of preview the audio. This is also a, a good way to make a cut. If you want to make a cut right at a low point, it's real easy to see and allows you to set endpoints and trim your audio layers to exactly where you uh, where you need them to be. But let's expand this out here. Let's uh, create some usable data here by using the keyframe assistant. You can either right click right on the footage layer and use the keyframe assistant right here, or you can go up to the animation menu, grab the keyframe assistant, and hit convert audio to keyframes. This gives us a null with a couple of, uh, and well, actually three animation sliders. I'll press the U key to reveal the keyframes. We got left, right, and both channels. And to take a look at that data and see what it is, it's a good idea to take a glance at the graph editor. So I'm going to select both channels and the slider here. This doesn't look like a value graph to me. It looks like a speed graph, and that's what it is. So let's change it to the value graph so we can see what we're dealing with. Um, you can see the highest level here is, uh, is just about 30, and the lowest, of course, is zero. This tells us exactly what values we have to work with. So let's use this data to animate something. I've created this composition. Uh, the audio has been imported, uh, trimmed, analyzed, adjusted. Keyframe Assistant was used to create the audio amplitude layer, and I'm using both channels only. And let's take a look at this graphic, see what we can animate. I'm going to press the U key twice. Tells me everything I've modified. And I can see I've got a pointer here. And I can adjust its position. That's what we want to do. Uh, going negative makes it go up. That's what we want. And how far we want it to go is it needs to go, this is a rectangle, it needs to go a maximum of 900 pixels. That gives us the range we need to work with. So let's start an expression by holding down the Alt or Option key and clicking on Position. I'm going to use the Animation Language menu, which is located right here, and go up to Interpolation and choose Linear with the most options. Let me explain exactly what this function does. Linear is the interpolation method. You have Ease, you have Ease In, and Ease Out. T is the original value. T min is the minimum original value. T max is the maximum original value. Value 1 is the new value calculated from T min. Value 2 is the new value calculated from T max. Our source would be the audio amplitude layer. T would be the both the channels slider. T min is going to be 0, that's the start of our range. T max is 28. Value 1 is going to be 0, because that's where the pointer wants to start. Value 2 is going to be minus 900. That's the maximum movement we want in Y. 
There's our linear method. And now we define the position array by starting with value 0, which is the x position. We want to just keep that where it is. And the new y position. So that's all there is to it. We have our source, audio amplitude. We have our variable, both channels. We have t min, t max, value 1, value 2. It's interpolated to give us a new y value and we build an array to create our motion. So now we've created our expression and let's just give it a quick preview and see how it does. That's looking pretty darn good. I've got another composition here. This time it's much simpler because I just used the pick whip to grab the both channels slider and define that as t. And the values this time are 0 to 25 and minus 45 to plus 25 degrees. That gives us uh, this movement. Okay? Works very, very well. I have another composition that uses a sound effect to animate the brightness of a lens flare. And finally, our original composition, which animates glow and exposure to create this great animated neon sign. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something, and this is Rick Gerard saying, keep it simple.